Hey everybody, Invisible Katana here with my top five moments from the E3 2019 Ubisoft press conference. Um, I thought they had a good conference this year. Overall, I really enjoyed it. I thought we got some good stuff. They couldn't help but throw Assassin's Creed in there in some way, shape, or form. So we got the Assassin's Creed um, Orchestra or Symphony, I think is what it was. So I was like, oh, that's interesting. I Immediately, I skipped through it. Like after they got to, I think it was like the footage when they started getting the, like Ezio, I was like, okay i'm done with this because i was already behind so i was like all right and two times the speed and i was like yeah let's get past this um like i said thought they had a good conference showed off some pretty entertaining stuff some stuff i expected some stuff i did not but getting right into it going with uh number five off of my list and i do have two uh honorable mention honorable mention moments uh from the press conference itself but starting with number five uh gods and monsters that comes out next february it just seemed interesting it was a totally cg trailer but i was like okay I'm curious about how the story is going to play out. It's like when humans need help, they go to the gods. When the gods need help, they go to you. And I was like, all right. They show some minute, really minute stuff. Um, there really wasn't much, you know, like I like the stuff they had at Ubisoft, but nothing like was really hitting me hard. So that's why this is like my number five. And it was just like, okay, cool, cool, cool. And something about it just caught my attention. What What's the story behind when the gods are in trouble? We'll go see you. Like a lot of stuff catches me solely based on the story. It seems like it'll be interesting combat wise like a little bit just you have know, like the flying character the kind of angelic you know winged angel of death type stuff so i was like all right let's see where that goes and we shall see some more i assume later on maybe we'll even see some stuff at like psx or something like that um depending on what ubisoft like how far along they really are uh, for the show or for that game specifically but that's my number five it just it just really caught my attention super minor thing and for some reason it was like that just sticks out kind of saw legitimately nothing pretty much but for some reason it just caught me so it has to be my number five number four for me though is actually roller champions another thing where it was like oh this is weird this is just a random little you know it seemed like it was going to be an arcadey thing and then it's like surprise it's already out um kind of in the realm of rocket league sort of style but you know obviously roller derby uh it was super crazy weird roller derby but i liked it i was like that seemed like it'll be a really fun arcadey type of game so that was my number four it's super weird that that uh, you know with everything that they did it was like that caught my attention so roller champions there's really not much to say about it it legitimately was just like that looks like it would be a really fun arcade game to play just pick up and play you know it's one of those 15 minutes at a time you know you start off like oh, i got a little bit of time and then poof you know hour and a half later you've been playing a bunch of matches it seems like one of those type of games so seems cool i, I haven't checked any footage out yet even though it's basically out now uh, or the alpha's out um but it does seem fun. So it seems like it'll be cool. And I'm looking forward to checking out an actual demo just to see exactly how things end up playing out. But that's my number four. Moving on to number three, we actually have uh, Rainbow Six Quarantine. I wasn't the only person because I watched like after that conference ended and it went back. I think it was on GameSpot. They said the exact same thing I was thinking, which was, is this Zombie U2? Which it can't be Zombie U because the whole point of that was like everything has a U on it for the Wii U. I was like, so is this like a new zombie game? Which it is called Zombie if you buy it on Steam. It's just Zombie. Um, so I was like, it's like Zombie U2, like how are they going to do that with the mechanics? Because the whole point of that was you use the gamepad on the Wii U to like look at your inventory and when you do that on the, you know, the main screen, the character's like in the bag so zombies can actually attack you while you're looking at your screen so you got to be careful when you do that stuff. And I was like, well, how's, you know, what are the mechanics? How's that going to work? What's going on here? And then it ends up being Rainbow Six Quarantine. Um, the way they did it, it was like, all right, well, clearly they're showing off like it's this crazy pseudo zombie type thing. It's an infection. Um, so I'm excited to see what they do with it. I'm a sucker for zombie games. Maybe it's just because I love Resident Evil so much. Like any zombie game is just like, I'm still, I'm still curious about it. Um, but this at least seems like it'll be entertaining too. It's like, all right, how do you go? And considering what they've done with Rainbow Six Siege, that's kind of what has me the most excited. Cause I was like, they've done, so I haven't played that game myself, but I've seen more than enough footage to be like, okay, they do some good stuff with that game mechanic wise there's a lot of stuff in there that i really love just watching it i'm like i like how that works so i'm excited to see them bring that into a new element like you have um if i remember it was through like three player co-op yeah so it's three player co-op and it's like do you work as a team to get to one person who's infected are there going to be other people that play as zombies like or just infected or whatever they're going to end up calling them so there you know there were a lot of questions there that had me curious i was like that based on what i'm coming up with in my own head it seems like it'll be entertaining i could be totally wrong and it could suck but i also kind of doubt it like i think it's been a minute since like a ring i was gonna say since the tom clancy game sucked but not a lot of people like the division but since a rainbow six game specifically 
has actually sucked. I think it's been a minute on that front. So I'm kind of excited to see a lot more content from that, especially with it being three-player co-op. I assume it has to be some element of versus. Like, I still have everything Siege in my head, so that's why I think, like, is it going to be these three people trying to get to, you know, this location or try to get to the cure for the virus or whatever, and then there's other players going against them? Or is this going to be a story-driven game? Like, is this going to be, like, you know, a Vegas-style game where it's, you know, you can have co-op and this and that, but it's story-driven. It's a point A to point B game where you go through an actual story. Because what since Rainbow Six Siege, that's kind of how I see everything. If it's not The Division and it's Rainbow Six, in my head, I only have Siege now because they've been working on that and they've been still, you know, putting stuff out, putting content out for that game. So in my head, that's all I think of. So maybe this will actually be a story-driven game and it's three-player co-op, which would kind of take it back to the Rainbow Six uh, Vegas style and, you know, the old school stuff, which I was probably only two players at the time, but, you know, same concept. Like, you have your actual team and you're working through an objective to get from A to B. And that's another element to it as well. Like, how do the classic Rainbow Six mechanics of the military stuff, uh, even with everything they have from Siege, what elements are they bringing over? Which I would assume they would have the destructible, like, walls and, you know, the shields and stuff like that. But will they have all those extra mechanics? Like, are you going to need the camera stuff? Would they throw that in there? Would it make sense? If it's story driven, it makes sense. You would be fighting against normal humans, but also infected. So you probably would still need the camera to sneak under the walls or uh, look under doors. I mean, um, you know, plant bombs to blow through walls. And that's how you like surprise the enemy. But it doesn't work on zombies, but it does work on humans. So there are a lot of questions as to how that'll play out. But it seems like with everything they have from, you know, Rainbow Six Siege and everything that's good about that game i'd like to see that done in a three-player co-op style where i would love for it to be story driven that's the big thing um because in my head the first thing i thought was oh it's like you know it's going to be three versus three type stuff but they don't say that they specifically say it's three-player co-op so maybe it really is story driven and i would love that i would love to see them do a story driven rainbow six like crazy pseudo zombie game because i think they would do it in a really unique way considering all the stuff that they've done with all the rainbow six all the tom clancy stuff in general they always have at least some cool concepts if the division may not have gotten it right they're doing it slightly better with the division too and then siege is just good um with everything that they've got that's going well i'd like to see how they implement that into like a more frantic style where you have enemies that are methodical and they don't hide behind cover or you have that mixture of enemies that do hide behind cover and then zombies i feel like they're gonna do some the classic thing was like these aren't zombies these are like the insane or, you know so they just people love to come up with dumb names like just you can just say they're zombies like it doesn't change the fact that it's a zombie game it is um but we'll see what happens with that but it does have me excited because i was like all right like sucker for zombie games i do like the rainbow six games but i i'm you know more of a story person that's why i didn't never really got siege um which if that has a story mode i never realized that um but yeah so I, i'm looking forward to that and I, I am hoping that it is legitimately a story-based game and i would love to see um how that ends up playing out so looking forward to that so that's kind of why it just caught my attention and it just stayed there because i was like hmm. aside from the fact that initially i thought it was like a zombie u game which was funny um you know, it, it just looks like it's going to be entertaining. So I'm definitely looking forward to that. But moving on to number two is actually um, a TV show, and that's Mythic Quest. I cannot deny the fact that when you have It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia, I am invested. And I am a huge fan of It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. I have been since, I guess, technically season two, because the first season was only like six episodes. There's like, I don't know how many people actually saw the first season when it really aired. Um but I love that show, as many people do. And then it's like, you have them writing a story about video games? And I was like, yep. It sucks that it's on like the Apple TV Plus deal or whatever. So I was like, that sucks. Because um, it's another service that I don't have that I would need to get just to see this really funny show. But I was like, yeah, I, I want to see that show. And that had me so excited because I'm like, they're, they're funny. I love It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. So... I don't know how it's going to play out, but I'm going to find a way to watch that show when it actually premieres. And I love the fact that the guy's name is Ian, and it's not it's not pronounced Ian, it's Ian. Um, so that was funny. So that was my number two, because I was just like, there's just so much good comedy can come from that. I already love video games, and to see them handle that, I just can't wait for that. So that was definitely my number two, because I was like, that's going to be so good, and I, I just can't wait. Uh, before I get to my number one, I do have two honorable mentions. Uh, they might surprise you, so... 
obviously you gonna kind of know you know already know what number one is but to go through my uh, honorable mentions since i didn't mention them here which may have been a surprise to some of you um no particular order you know actually yeah particular order elite squad who gives an f uh, mobile game it's kind of cool it's like oh you have all the characters from the different games that's interesting i who cares i know a lot of people were disappointed sam fisher does technically show up this year at e3 but not how people wanted him um, there was one woman who looked like Jill from Resident Evil. I don't remember what Tom Clancy game she was from, but when she first showed up, I was like, was that Jill? I was like, there's no way that's Jill from Resident Evil. But she had, like, she's wearing blue and everything. The only difference is she had, like, a long braid. Um, that, like, well, technically the difference is that her, she has long black hair and, of course, the face paint. But I was like, she's wearing blue, she's got the beret. I was like, this makes me think of Jill from, like, the first Resident Evil game. So that was really funny to me. Um, the other honorable mention I have is, uh, Ghost Recon Breakpoint. The reason that somehow manages to not surpass like a CG trailer of Gods and Monsters is solely based on the fact that I just don't care about those games. I really don't. It's the same, like, as much as I like what they do with those games, and the same with Siege, that's why I never bought it. As good as the content is for that game, and as much as they still support it, I just couldn't care less. Like I know what I like. I know it looks good in a game. I can see like that's a good concept. That looks good. I like how that's done. I've played the first um, Ghost Recon Wildlands. I played like the demo for it with. I even played it online. I played the demo online with people, and it's fun. Um, but it was still just like it was nothing that ever really caught my attention. So this one going in is Ghost Recon Breakpoint. I'm just like cool. I like John Bernthal. He was cool on. Um, he was cool as Shane shaking his head all the time, and he was certainly sweet as the Punisher. And just going crazy and barking all the time but i'm like i don't care it doesn't matter he brought a dog out that was cute it's not gonna make me get the game i just don't care so that's why it was an honorable mention i'm sure it'll be fun i'm sure people that get the game will certainly have a good time i enjoyed playing like i said wildlands the demo so they're good games they just never catch my attention i don't know why exactly they just don't um it is cool that they brought the ai stuff back um i know some people apparently didn't like that too much because they probably suck so maybe they will be better this time around but who knows we'll see what ends up happening with that but it just it was like cool that seems cool i just know i'm never gonna get the game i could get it for free and i'll totally play through it without a doubt but i don't see myself actually buying it unless they do some crazy collection like the ghost recon um like a ghost recon collection thing or something you know something like that so i i just it's cool but i'm never gonna get it so that's why it's not really on my list and that of course leads to the super insanely obvious number one which is Watch Dogs 3 also known as Watch Dogs legion i have not played any of the Watch Dogs games um i'm the type of person that likes to play like in order but i probably won't ever buy the first one i'm probably gonna get the second one because it looked cool even when i first saw it, i was like Watch Dogs 2 looks insane like that makes me want to get the first one just to have the story but I don't think it's that relevant, so I'm probably going to end up getting Watch Dogs 2, and then I'll get Watch Dogs 3, because they had a great freaking trailer. You have Permadeath, you have, like, every NPC, you know, you can choose. I'm very curious. I, I can't wait till that game comes out, because I know somebody's going to have a YouTube video where they test all that out. So we'll see how that really works, like, how many, when do you get to the recycled voices, and obviously, you know, there's, there's limits to everything, but it looked good. It was like you have permadeath you have the option to surrender which could possibly lead to all oh, this person gave up so now we have to go rescue them and that you know different stuff like that different dialogue uh everyone has different stats like they had the one person who was like an adrenaline junkie and it said like might die randomly which i think makes more sense now that i realize like okay because at first i was like that's super weird like you recruit someone and they they'll just die what does that mean but it's like if you're not playing as that person they're off doing adrenaline junkie stuff and then it's just like yeah he drove off a bridge he's dead now and you know like that type of stuff can happen like that's what it means when it says might die randomly if you switch characters and that person's off to live in their life they might try to jump off a bridge or they'll drive off a bridge or do some crazy street race and die in a car crash or something insane and it's like yep he died randomly that's why that happened he's an adrenaline junkie so it's kind of cool that you have these different concepts like you have brawlers tech people assassins the old lady retired assassin of course was super cool um, especially when they did like the official trailer for it and she just like taps this dude on the back and is like excuse me boom and just blasts his face and i was like well that's effed up but it'll be interesting to see how that game plays out i'm definitely looking forward to that and i thought it was great i was like that looks super cool you know it's in london um so that's pretty sweet i love the fact that when they had the assassin character and he's like she rolls and the ai was like does the rolling help and she's just like okay like this freaking ai so I thought that was cool, and we'll have uh, Bagley is his name, but 
I'm excited for that. I think that looks really good. And considering what how well they did with Watch Dogs 2, I'm very excited to see how this one plays out. Like, with them having that mechanic. Like, that's a, that's a tough thing to have. Like, as cool as it is, it's tough. That's a tough thing to take on, to be like, yep, NPC, you can recruit anybody you want. Everybody's got custom missions and stuff like that. Like, is it literally every single person? Like, is it possible to do that? I assume there's some characters where it would just be impossible. Um, so, you know, we'll see how that ends up playing out. Like, certain, you know, those elements. It might be a percentage thing. It might be randomly generated, where it's like, yeah, it, it totally works for this person, but you know, not for that person. So, but, you know, the whole thing is, like, you can recruit anyone. So, we'll see. Some people are going to push those limits, but that was definitely my number one. I was like, this looks good. Um, switch up characters. Some people can do this. Some people can do that. So, I, I, I like that idea. Some people can fight better. Some people have totally different moves. Uh, some stuff, obviously, is the same. Like, they even show it in the trailer where they do, like, that kick. Like, that. some animations, of course, are the same across the board. Uh, and they just, like, swapped all the characters in and out. But... I don't know. We'll see what happens with that. But it looked really good. I was like, that's pretty sweet. Uh, that I thought was, without a doubt, my favorite moment. Um, da- uh, the new Just Dance is also on the Wii. Hilarious. I just wanted to randomly throw that in there. Um, that was funny. Uh, they did have K-pop in there, which I think they've had before. That was like the only reason I even listened to that. Because I was speeding through and I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. That's K-pop. Let me back that up a little bit. Um, so that was funny. But like, man, Just Dance. They keep It keeps on keeping on. And it's on the Wii. But yeah, those are my thoughts for the uh, Ubisoft press conference. Of course, I would love to know your thoughts on it, uh, your favorite moments, your least favorite moments, what ca- caught your attention, what you wish was there. I think everyone wished Splinter Cell was there. Um, are you surprised that there wasn't something from Assassin's Creed, like maybe some new DLC? Because that's like the classic, and there's always some new story DLC. And I don't believe there's been any yet uh, for Odyssey. And uh, it's been almost a year. And considering how assassin's creed has been in the past and even if they do take their breaks is there's always some extra dlc story so i am a little bit surprised that they didn't have something like hey here's what we're adding to it i also don't know how that game officially ended so maybe the way they ended that it was just like no way but i highly doubt that i highly i mean that's how the third game ended and they were like here's an alternate universe storyline so they can make whatever they want for dlc so i am a little surprised that they don't have anything for um for odyssey as you know like just some new dlc or anything like that it's like some new storyline stuff but i don't mind that they don't i don't even have the game i don't even have origins i'm still behind um but yeah it, i thought they had a good conference of course we'll love to know what you guys thought overall if you guys want to check out my other top list they'll be at the end of this video but i'd love to know what caught your attention at ubisoft uh press conference this year so please put your comments down in the comment section below and of course thanks for watching